Hi, welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how endotherms control their core body temperature. This includes the role of the thermoregulatory centre in the hypothalamus. Now, endothermic organisms include both birds and mammals. Endotherms have evolved to maintain an almost constant body temperature, regardless of the temperature of the environment. To do this, endotherms rely on heat generated by metabolic reactions. For example, organs such as the heart, the brain and the kidneys generate a significant amount of heat. This heat is then distributed around the organism in the bloodstream. Now any changes in temperature are monitored by receptors. Peripheral temperature receptors in the skin monitor changes to the surface temperature. This can take place when the temperature of the environment changes. Warm receptors detect when the temperature of the skin increases and cold receptors detect when the temperature of the skin decreases. We also find temperature receptors in the hypothalamus in the brain. These receptors monitor changes in the temperature of the blood, for example during intense exercise. Now the hypothalamus contains a region called the thermoregulatory center. This coordinates how the organism responds when the core body temperature changes. There are two parts to the thermoregulatory center. If the hypothalamus detects that the temperature of the blood has increased, then the heat loss center is activated. This sends impulses via the autonomic nervous system to effectors which trigger heat loss. On the other hand, if the temperature of the blood decreases, then the heat gain center is activated. This sends impulses to effectors which trigger heat gain or reduce heat loss. And the whole system operates via negative feedback. OK, so let's look at how endotherms respond to an increase in the core body temperature. This can take place, for example, during intense exercise. In this case, responses are activated to cool the body down. I'm showing you here the blood vessels in the skin. Beneath the surface of the skin, there is a network of capillaries. Blood passes into capillaries via an arteriole, and blood leaves the capillaries via a venule. Between the arteriole and the venule, there is the arteriovenous shunt vessel. Blood can pass through the shunt vessel, bypassing the capillaries. Now, when the core body temperature rises, the arteriovenous shunt vessel narrows. At the same time, the arteriole supplying the capillaries dilates, in other words, widens. This increases the blood flow through the capillary network. Scientists call this process vasodilation. Vasodilation causes the surface of the skin to appear red or flushed. Now, because more blood is passing through the outer layers of the skin, heat energy can be lost from the blood via radiation from the skin surface. And the effect of this is to reduce the temperature of the blood flowing through the capillaries. Now, I just want to make one point about vasodilation. In vasodilation, it's the arteriole that is dilated, in other words, widened. Some students say that the capillaries dilate, but that's not correct. OK, now as well as vasodilation, we can also cool down by sweating. In humans, the skin contains a large number of sweat glands. When the core body temperature rises, these are triggered to release sweat onto the surface of the skin. When the sweat evaporates, heat energy is transferred from the skin surface to the air, and this causes the blood flowing through the skin to cool down. Now, in some mammals, sweat glands are not found all over the skin. For example, dogs have sweat glands mainly on their paws. So, in order to cool down, dogs pant. In this case, evaporation of water from their tongue and mouth leads to cooling. Kangaroos lick their front legs to cool down. And again, evaporation of water leads to cooling. OK, now mammals, including humans, are covered with hair and this can trap a layer of air near the skin. Air acts as an insulator, reducing heat loss from the skin surface. Now hairs are connected to tiny muscles called hair erector muscles. These are also called erector pili muscles. If the body temperature increases, then the hair erector muscles relax and the hairs lie flat. This means that less air is trapped near the skin surface. So by making the hairs lie flat, more heat can be lost. 
Now I should point out though that this is not a major factor in humans. Now many endotherms are found in hot conditions such as deserts. These endotherms also have other adaptations to reduce overheating. I'm showing you here a desert fox which lives in hot conditions. Now desert foxes are relatively small animals and have very large ears. These adaptations increase the surface area to volume ratio which increases the rate of cooling. They also have a pale coloration which reduces the absorption of radiation from the sun. Desert foxes are nocturnal, being active at night time when conditions are cooler. They also spend time in underground dens, avoiding the heat of the sun. Okay, now there are four main responses to the core body temperature decreasing. Firstly, sweating will reduce or stop, and the rate of evaporation of any sweat on the skin surface will slow down. Secondly, vasoconstriction takes place. In this case, the arteriovenous shunt widens and the arteriole constricts or narrows. Now, blood is diverted away from the capillary network under the skin and towards the body core, and this reduces heat loss from the skin surface. In mammals, hair erector muscles are triggered to contract, causing hair to stand upright. This traps a layer of insulating air near the skin, reducing heat loss, and we see a similar effect with feathers in birds. And finally, a drop in the core body temperature can also trigger shivering. During shivering, large muscles in the body undergo rapid contraction and relaxation. Now these are voluntary muscles which are usually under conscious control. However, shivering is an involuntary response. During shivering, heat generated by respiration passes into the bloodstream and increases the core body temperature. Now endotherms living in cold conditions often show additional adaptations to reduce heat loss. I'm showing here an arctic fox. These live in cold conditions. As you can see, arctic foxes have small ears. This gives them a relatively low surface area to volume ratio, which reduces heat loss. They also have thick insulating fur, and the fur becomes thicker in winter compared to summer. Arctic foxes also avoid cold conditions by spending time in dens. Some endotherms enter hibernation during winter, for example hedgehogs. In the autumn, they increase their body weight to prepare for winter. As temperatures fall, they enter a shelter and reduce their metabolic rate, becoming inactive. They then remain in the shelter over the winter, emerging from hibernation in spring. Other endotherms, such as seals, have insulating blubber beneath the skin, which reduces the rate of heat loss. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe how endotherms control their core body temperature.